So Robert Kennedy Jr., who's a challenging character and a well-known so-called vaccine sceptic or science denier, if you prefer, is cancelling half a billion pounds worth of funding for precisely the sort of vaccines that counter viruses like COVID, bird flu and, 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 and similar. <laughs> And you read these headlines, even though you know that he has a long track record of being bonkers, you read these headlines and you sort of find yourself thinking, how can this be happening? And then you find yourself thinking, is this as bad as it looks? Because we've got a sort of normal normali normality bias, haven't we? we? We're presented with something that looks absolutely abnormal, absolutely crazy. And you think, well, hang on a minute, the grown-ups are doing it. And even if he appears to be very strange, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is technically a grown-up. He's, he's the Secretary of State for Health. So maybe taking away half a billion pounds worth of funding for the viruses that combat things like COVID is not quite as crackers as it sounds to a an amateur like me at first glance. I, I mean, it, perhaps it would be something that is both understood and approved of by people who aren't fellow science deniers. I do not know. So what did Anne Applebaum tell us yesterday? She reminded us yesterday of what we do when we find ourselves in danger of drowning in a sea of propaganda and misinformation, misunderstanding and ignorance. You've got to speak to an expert. Professor Robin Shattuck is a professor of infection at Imperial College London and he led the UK self-amplifying COVID mRNA vaccines during the pandemic. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much did I sound like I knew what I was talking about when I said the phrase self-amplifying COVID mRNA vaccines? <laughs> we, we may never know. But Robin has worked on such vaccines um, against threats such as Ebola, Lassa fever, bird flu, Marburg, and as I mentioned a moment ago, COVID itself. Um, we'll begin, if we may, Robin, with the headline, uh, RFK Jr. cancels $500 million in funding for mRNA vaccines. How alarmed are you by that? Well, it's concerning, not just because of the actual cuts, but really the message that it sends. Now, obviously, you know, the US is totally entitled to decide where they want to put their research budget. Um, interestingly, some of the people they cite that they've cut research funding to either were unaware that they were getting funding, like Moderna, they say they have no funding from BADA, the, the cuts are done. One company that cited no longer trades. So there's some strange information there. But the major point here is that he's using pseudoscience to justify these decisions, saying that these vaccines are unsafe um, and that they don't work. And this completely flies against all the evidence that we have for vaccines and particularly for mRNA vaccines that were instrumental at preventing deaths and keeping people out of hospital during the pandemic. How, how much energy can you afford to put in to tracking how people like him end up where they've ended up and what influences they are operating under? Well, I think it's very difficult. I mean, yes. this decision is pretty predictable by the field. But of course, he has his own agenda. He has sacked the vaccine experts that look at all these data and has appointed a panel of experts that represent the same viewpoint that he has, which is really contrary to all the scientific data that we have. So it's quite easy to provide some kind of legitimization of his viewpoint if he's appointing people who just agree with his viewpoint rather than represent independent scientists. I, I hope I'm not being pedantic, but it, and it may have been a slip of the tongue, but you, you describe the people he's appointed as experts. Is that is that... So, well, it depends how you define experts. That's what I'm asking. So these are, these are people that have some scientific background but are not experts in vaccine development, vaccine safety. So they have some legitimacy in, in having a scientific background, but these would not be experts that would be recognised by regulatory authorities. I see. And, and those were the kind of people who rose to prominence originally on social media during lockdown, during the, the, the worst moments of COVID, and who presumably uh, were the source of Robert F. Kennedy's um, misunderstandings in, in, in the broader field. So he's essentially, having been gaslit online, he's brought the gaslighters into government. 
Yeah, this is absolutely the case. Wow. Um, and this is really concerning, not just for RNA technology, but for vaccines in general. Um, as you're aware, you know, there's been a major measles outbreak in, in the US. He's not endorsed vaccines as being the, the best measure to prevent those outbreaks. It increases people's hesitancy around vaccines, which you know, beyond clean water are the biggest public health uh, benefit uh, that's been discovered in, in this century. I, 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 I love that comparison, and it's obviously watertight, if you pardon the pun, but how, on a personal level, Robin, how, how surprised are you that we are having conversations like this? Not specifically about Robert F. Kennedy and this latest budget cut, but, but also a conversation predicated on the fact that there are two sides to the argument about the efficacy and importance of vaccines. I, I, I presume when you started your career, you, you thought that those arguments were over. Well, I think, again, the danger is saying there are two sides. Yes. Because, uh, you know, if you say there are two sides, it's, it gives the impression that they have equal merit. But in fact, the majority, the absolute vast majority of scientists and clinicians would support vaccination as an appropriate and safe strategy um, against a few motivated individuals that want to discredit the technology for their own agenda. And you'd expect, uh, because we think somewhat naively that these things will follow the laws of logic, that things like measles outbreaks would, would provide the mother of all head wobbles for the, for the people that you describe. But they don't, do they? The, 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 because we, when it's not science versus science, as you've just reminded us. It's science versus cultishness almost. Absolutely. And also the other thing that's very challenging, I think, is that vaccines are so successful that we rarely see the diseases that they prevent. So we see the side effects um, and we're measuring a side effect against not getting a vaccine rather than the disease. But if you ask people who are sitting in a situation where they're seeing infectious diseases every day, if they want vaccines and they're not able to get them, they, they would be clamoring to have those vaccines. Um how concerned should we be? Uh, viruses don't respect borders. Um, uh, the USA uh, obviously leads where much of, much of the rest of the world follows. But I, I don't... I suppose there's two questions. I don't see much danger of the political co becoming contagious here, but how, how damaging could a, a widespread government-endorsed opposition to these kinds of vaccines be for the, for the broader planet, for the, for the bigger population? Well, I think that, that certainly in the UK, there won't be that political contamination. Mm. Um, you know, I think we have much more faith in, in the uh, expertise of our own institutions for regulating vaccines in this country. And in terms of the technology, it actually gives an opportunity for places like the UK to lead with these types oh, okay. of technology That's with the right way. investments. Mm. It is slightly more concerning on a global scale because uh, institutions that are preparing for future pandemics are quite dependent on US funding. So, for example, you know, the lack of US funding for, for organisations like the WHO um, and other vaccine uh, developers that are preparing for future pandemics will be impacted by what goes in, on in the US. A final question. Have, have we, we, I use the word very loosely, have we done enough to combat the sort of misinformation that Robert F. Kennedy is a victim of and, of course, a, a champion of as well? Well, I think it's, it's a continual battle to make sure that evidence-based science is, is communicated and, and scientists and doctors, you know, really need to step up to the plate and make sure they communicate both the benefits and the risks of any medicine so that people can make informed decisions rather than just, uh, you know, listening to the latest trend on social media. Yeah, I, I mean, it's true of so many of the conversations that we have on this programme at the moment, but the stakes, as you've reminded us, are, are, are rarely as high as they would be in a case like this. Professor Robin Shattuck, thank you so much. Um, a professor of infection at Imperial College London, but obviously, you know, Billy Bunch of Numbers on your Auntie Doris's Facebook page probably knows more about the facts than Robin does. That seems to be how public discourse works in this country. Um, I, here's, an, here's an example. Nobody believes you, mate. Didn't the Oxford vaccine get pulled because of how dangerous it was? 
So again, in the spirit of what Professor Shattuck said about dealing with misinformation, the, the, the vaccine you're referring to was a billion times better than nothing. But as the science progressed, other vaccines were developed that were even better than that one, so they stopped using that one. And, and the measure of how good or how bad something is, is is a bit like reading the small print in your paracetamol box and discovering that sometimes that can have terrible side effects. So even if the, the, the bad effect is infinitesimal and tiny, if something comes along where the possibility of a side effect, a bad side effect, is even tinier, clever clogs, then you go with the one with the even tinier likelihood of something bad happening but you know we're here now for four years later and you're still texting this program with that nonsense